Good morning and welcome to the Geographer's Craft Blog. GRG 460C, the University of Texas at Austin, Department of Geography and the Environment. Today for Lab 6, we're working on custom map projections. Now as you remember, maps are projected differently depending on the area they're depicting and the distortion that they're trying to show. In this exercise, we're going to create a custom projection that involves us selecting our own false eastings and false northings to sh um, project a county of your choice that minimizes distortion of scale, area, and angle over the entire county. Now to begin this, we're going to go get some county information from U.S. Census Bureau's Tiger Line Files. I'm going to open up my web browser. And in Google, I'm just going to type in Tiger Line Shape File, and that should take us to the U.S. Census Bureau's website. So you have a couple of options once you're here. There's 2007 information, 2008, or 2009. Go and use 2009 because it's going to be a little bit more up to date. So this is the US Tiger Line shapefiles main page. From here, we can download many shapefiles, the notes that the Census Bureau uses for defining a lot of these. Um, it's a very useful website, and you'll be using this a lot if you do GIS um, analysis in the future. So I'm going to go download. 2009 Tiger shape files now and from this point you can choose the state and county of your choice I'm gonna go ahead and pick something maybe I don't know what that means and I'm gonna pick Oregon I'm gonna submit now from this point you uh, can keep choosing and uh, go down to the county level but what I want to do is I want to extract all of the counties within that state. So I'm going to need that state outline at a later date. So on the left here, I'm going to choose county and equivalents, current, click that. It's going to download. Now once this downloads, see it in the bottom left-hand corner, you can open that up and then select all of these. Um, Control X to copy them or cut them and then I'm gonna paste those into my lab 6 folder now through having H drive problems earlier I'm going to save this to my um, save this to my desktop and then we're gonna drag it to our H drive at a later date so be sure these files show up maybe now once I have those shape files or uh, the census data saved to my desktop on lab 6, now it has five different files. This is just what ArcGIS needs for the various um, tasks that it will perform. Now I'm ready to open up ArcGIS. Now that I'm in ArcGIS, there's going to be two things that I'm going to do right away so I don't lose my data. Um, remember, we saved it to the desktop, and we're going to drag it to our H drive later. Um, in order to be able to drag that information to your H drive, when you're done working on it, you must go to File and Map Document Properties. Just be sure that little box that says Store Relative Path Names to Data Source is checked. It's going to allow you to drag files around from H drive to C drive to maybe jump drive um, at your leisure. So you might need to do that in the future. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this because one thing we have learned in GIS is that you must save, save, save. So I'm going to save it as my last name and lab6. Be sure that's in my proper folder, which is lab6. Okay. Now once we have that all saved, we can um, go to the next step, which is adding our data. So I'm going to click Add Data. And I'm going to go to my lab6 folder. Um, on the right, you can connect to your folder. In case desktop, it's going to be lab6. Perfect. And then I'm going to go and open up that shape file. Now, this is these are all the different counties for the state that I chose. In this case, I want to choose one county so I can define a custom projection. Now, as usual, when you you have two ways of choosing things. You can either click the select features by rectangle and just click on the feature that you want. The easiest way to do it is if you right click and go to properties on your shape file. 
statement. If you right click and go to the attributes table in your shapefile, you can select by attributes, which you have all done before. So in this case, I'm going to be looking at name LSAD. So I'm going to choose that. That's going to be my new selection. It's going to equal. If you select unique values, it gives you all the different counties that are in that specific um, shape file. So I'm going to choose Hood River County. Apply that. Note that it's highlighted now on my attributes table. Once it's highlighted, I can go ahead and close out of both of those. Now I can export this as just a county. So right click, data, export data. I'm going to export these selected features. I'm going to be sure it's going to go into our uh, Lab 6 folder. Perfect. I'm going to save this as HR1. Now some of you might have problems if it doesn't let you save. It might be, um, type might be a file and personal geodatabase feature class. Be sure it's a shape file that's going to save you some problems later on. Okay, and you want to export that and add it to the map. Change the color on that so I can see what I'm looking at just a little bit better. And then don't forget, there's a deselect button right here. Deselect that turquoise line that's around that shape file. So now we're ready to set our custom projection. We're going to do that by choosing a false easting and a false northing and a central meridian on our county. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and zoom to my layer of my specific county. Now at this point we can measure um, across and vertically for our false easting and false northings on a basic central meridian. So to get that central meridian I can uh, just clue, choose a um, like my zoom button and I'm just going to hover around here and see what it says for my degree, decimal degrees of location. I just want a rough center point. So for me, that looks pretty good. And it's going to be negative 121.633 and 45.518. Now to remember that, I'm just going to choose a sticky note from here and uh, put that sticky note right on top of my map. Now I can um, choose, write down exactly what I wanted to put down. So negative 121.646 easting or west and 45.528 that's going to be my north feature. Now I just need to measure the distance uh, vertically and horizontally across that county. So if you go to the measure tool right here you can uh, measure distance by drawing a line. You're going to want to choose your units for our distance, it's going to be in meters. Be sure that's on meters because when we set our projection, the option is going to give us for false east and northern will be in meters as well. So I'm just going to left click and drag this across and see what it looks like. As you can see um, in the measure box, it says that that length of that line is about 38,203 meters. So I'm going to round that up to 60,000 meters just to make it a nice even number. I know that my easting and northing is going to be positive. I'll do the same thing north to south and you can see that it's about 51,000 meters. So I'm going to make both, both false to east, easting and northing uh, 60,000 meters. Or, yeah. So, once we're there, I can close out of that. Go back to my sticky note here. just want to note that my Easting and northing is going to be 60,000 meters. Now, from this point, we close out our measure box. We can project this whole data frame using that specific coordinate system. So, I'm going to go to properties of my layers and select new projected coordinate system on the right. The very first thing you should do is you throw in a name. So I'm going to call this HR Custom. That's the name of my county. And I know that it's a custom projection. In this case, I'm going to use the transverse Mercator. Um, it's going to show the least amount of distortion. So transverse Mercator. 
Now it gives me some options or some parameters, and I can fill those values in myself. So let's uh, click back to our sticky note so we can see that. Negative 121.646 is going to be our central meridian. Our latitude of origin is 45.528, and our false easting and false northing is 60,000. So I'm going to put that central meridian in right now. Negative 121.6. Negative 121.5646. Now my false easting is going to be 60,000 meters. False northing is also going to be 60,000 meters. And then you can change the scale factor. In this case, we're going to leave scale factor the same at 1. And 45.528 for our latitude origin. Maybe 45.528. Um, notice your linear unit is in meters, so that's when you are choosing your false easting and northing. That is going to be in a meter. Remember, um, that's what you measured it as. All I have to do now is select the geographic coordinate system that you're working with. So we are just going to select a geographic coordinate system, so North America, 1983, and now click finish. Now, notice that changed my projection of my map. Now, to display this map that I've just created, I want to compare my custom projection of Hood River County to a more standard projection of Hood River County. So, I want to create another data frame that's going to show that other standard projection. To do that, I'm going to go up to Insert and Insert a new data frame. I'm going to call this data frame um, HR Standard. And then I'm just going to drag in my shapefile of Hood River. Note that it is of a different uh, projection here. So I'm going to choose my properties. I want to be sure this is projected to something. Um, predefined projected coordinate systems. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose Oregon Statewide Lambert in international fee. Now, if I really want to see if this worked, um, I can go to my layout view and just kind of take a look and see what these different projections look like. Notice that my um, HR1 um, or my HR standard projection is really small. So if you right click on that and zoom to layer, it's going to make it bigger. All right. So now you can see there's roughly the same it's a very small county and it's not going to be that much of a difference but there are differences in this so that's going to make a big difference when you're choosing your demo to analyze your demographic information so from this point all we have to do is turn it into a beautiful map um, that shows both the hr standard and the hr custom uh, map projections the best choice to do this is probably going to be a um, landscape format so if i right click outside of my page and go to page and print setup and choose landscape. Now from this point, be sure you choose your size of your paper as letter. If you go bigger than it, you try to print it out, it's not going to work. So and be sure that's landscape orientation. Notice that changes the orientation of our map. Um, now I just want to show my two counties without the state of Oregon on it. And then, maybe, uh, I would like to show my um, where this county actually is in Oregon. So um, let's situate these two counties someplace where they're trying to get these boxes the same size. It's going to show your differences a little bit better. I'm just going to do that by putting them side by side and making them roughly the same size. So these are almost there. Okay. When we're there, I'm going to go ahead and zoom to the layer on that one. And that's my HR1 custom. All right, now you can see the differences um, if you have a really, really good eye. Notice there's a little bit of a difference in our HR custom down the bottom half of the projection. Um, not a whole lot of difference. Once again, it's a very small county, so it's not going to make too much of a difference. But I like to show that. 
Now the only thing I would do to make this map a little bit better besides removing data frames and adding a title, legend, scale, and north bar is I would show where they, these come from in the state of Oregon. So to do that, I'm going to create one more data frame. So I'm going to go back to my data view and insert one more data frame. I'm just going to call this data frame OR. I'm going to drag in my both of my layers from my top map. And be sure Oregon selected. Once again, I'm going to choose a projection for this for my data frame layer. Every time you create a new data frame, you have to create a new or redefine the projection. So in this case, it's going to be state plane, perhaps. That's state systems. Which one did I use? Oregon statewide Lambert and international feet. We use that projection. Okay. Now, um, I think it's going to be look a little cleaner if I change the background to hollow on this. Um, that blue is a little harsh, so maybe something a little greener. It is Oregon, so green's a great choice there. I'm going to go back to my data view, or my layout view. I just want to put this somewhere in the corner where people can see what county it is that we're looking at. Now, from this point, just add a title, a legend, a scale bar, take off those pesky data frames and be sure you label uh, which two you are looking at. So and remember to get rid of the data frame bar. You can just right click on that and go to properties. See it's outlined there. From here we can go to frame and just choose no frame. Okay. We'll do the same thing to our other um, River County borders frame, no frame. Now, you can have a frame if it looks clean and doesn't bleed over the edge. I tend not to do that because I always tend to have problems printing it later on. And we go to properties, be sure that data frame is no frame. Okay. All right, now we can just add uh, about a title. We're going to call this uh, custom versus standard projection for River County. Oregon, and it's going to be 2009 data is what I use. And we're also going to insert a nice little legend. Legend is going to show our HR1 and our county. That's not what we want. We just want to show that these two are different county projections. So we can actually probably just use that with a text box. It might be the easiest way to do it. So for the first text box, um, you can double click that and see what you're typing. I want to put River County, Oregon projection, or custom projection. 60,000 meters false easting and northing. And then we're going to do our central meridian of negative 121.548. Uh, and then some other relevant information here based on transverse mercator. UTM, um, Geographic, NAD, 1983, coordinate system. Okay, let's see what that looks like. So now I don't like that because it's not aligned to the left. So I'm going to align that to the left and then click OK. I'll put that over there on my HR custom projection, which is right here. I'm going to do another text box. I'm going to just say which the other was projected to. And so this is going to be Hood River County, Oregon, 2009, 
Let's see what else. Whatever right. County, Oregon, uh, standard rejection. This was the Lamberson conformal conic statewide. We're going to be sure that's aligned to the left and call that one good. So from here, you guys know how to make the rest of the map. Add your scale bar, add your north arrow, add your name and who the map was created by, and turn it in. Don't forget that this lab also includes a one page, 250 word write up. It includes uh, which county and state you chose, where your central meridian is located, and how you found that. Found that. Um, why you chose your false eastings and false northings. What the scale factor is that you chose, and why did you use the universal trans mercator um, projection definition, and what does that even mean? So, uh, just explain to me in 250 words why you're doing this, and that's it. So this is once again this is the Geographer's Craft Lab 6 GRG 460C the University of Texas at Austin. Thanks for watching.